Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm going to show you how to load up LZ Doom on your RG 351P. Now this is going to be using the Arc OS firmware, uh, but I expect that this will probably be available on the 351 Elect firmware at some point as well. But right now we're just going to stick with Arc OS because that's all that's available. But these things are moving so quickly that you never know. You know, in a week, maybe half a week, it might even be implemented by then. So just bear in mind that this is going to show you how to load things up at a fundamental level. I'm going to show you how to load up the game files, how to organize organize them and then how to use shell scripts in order to call to the correct modifiers as needed in order to load up specific games. We're going to talk about the original Doom games. We're also going to talk about games that use the Doom engine, for example, Heretic and Hexen. And then we'll also talk about total conversion mods. And finally, I'll show you how to use PK3 files, which are a component of ZDoom. Now, if all of that sounded like gibberish to you, that's absolutely fine. I will walk you through each of these steps as we go through it. But without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, so all of this is possible by the fact that LZ Doom has now been ported over as an emulator within ArcOS. And basically all that means is that you now have a Doom folder within the latest versions of ArcOS, and you can drop all your files into that. In previous versions of this firmware, as well as in 351 Elec in the stock firmware, you had to go into the port section and then pull up a port version of Doom, which was actually just pulling a RetroArch core. So this really simplifies the process and allows you to take full advantage of everything that's available within LZ Doom itself. Now it's not the most capable engine in the world. GZ Doom is the one that's the most powerful and that's the one that people will use on their PCs and Macs and stuff like that. That's just not possible on the 351P. It doesn't have the power for it. So we're gonna stick with LZ Doom and I think that's the right choice. So first things first, you need retail copies of Doom. So I recommend going to GOG.com and just searching for Doom. And you can see here, Doom 2 is on sale for three bucks and Ultimate Doom is for less than $2. So grab any of those and then download them because you're going to need the retail files from that. For the most part, you can use the game files from the first Doom game, but there are certain mods that require Doom 2. So I recommend just grabbing them both if you don't have them already. All right, like I mentioned before, if you go into your SD card on ArcOS, you'll find a Doom folder. Within here is where you're going to put all of your files. So for example, I've put in the Doom 1 and 2 WADs. Those are the retail files it needs in order to work. But in addition to that, you can use other games that include the Doom Source engine. So for example, Heretic and Hexen, and then an add-on pack called the Plutonia Experience. All of those will work just out of the gate. All you have to do is just drag them into the folder. Additionally, there are games called Total Conversion Mods, and basically those also are WADs that behave in just that same way they use the Doom engine. The only thing you need in order to make these things work is that you need to have the Retail Doom WAD in the same folder. That's it. After that, you can play all of these games. Now things will get more complicated when you try to use a mod like Brutal Doom, which is a very popular version of Doom, which has a lot of blood and guts and stuff like that. So to find it, you just go over to ModDB and then you click on the Files section. And then you can just download the version 21. Once you've downloaded the file, you'll need to unzip it and you'll find here that it says PK3 file. That's the Brutal Doom file. Now in previous videos that I've done, we haven't been able to load PK3 files. We've only been able to do total conversions like the WAD files. So now I'm going to show you how to load a PK3 file on top of a WAD file. First things first, open up Notepad or a text editor on your computer. And I'll have a written guide down below that'll show you all of these steps, including everything you need to paste in here. But for now, you're going to paste in this code here into your text document. So let's walk through what this code means. The first part just says, hey, open up LZ Doom. The second part says, use the Doom WAD as your base. And the third part says, use this mod file. And all you have to do is just use the name of that PK3 file and make sure it's routing back to the correct Doom file. After that, go ahead and save this file directly into your Doom folder and just call it .sh under the All Files selection. There you go. So now you've made a shell script that is going to open up Brutal Doom. So let me show you some other uses for this exact same script. For example, here is a Call of Duty version of Brutal Doom that you can use. And it just takes Brutal Doom and then adds on a bunch of Call of Duty style weapons. So same thing here, you just want to save this PK3 file. And then drag the file over to your SD card. And then we're going to make another shell script. But the easy thing about this is once you've made one shell script, you can just borrow it over and over again. So all you have to do is just copy the original Brutal Doom shell script, paste it into the same folder, rename it to whatever you want. I'm going to call it Call of Duty Brutal Doom. And then save the file name of that Call of Duty Brutal Doom, and then just go in here and paste that file name in. 
And that's it. So now we have an additional shell script that's going to open up Call of Duty World Noob, just like that. It used to be so dang hard to get these games to work, and now it's super easy. All you have to do is make this simple script. Now, some games are WAD files, but you can't load them directly like you can with Hexen or Heretic or something like that. Because, for example, they may use Doom 2 as their source, and that means that it's not going to work correctly. Or it may have additional files you have to load as well. So Batman Doom is a perfect example because it uses both of these circumstances. So let's download this game, and then I'll walk you through this one. And unfortunately, there is not one single place to find every mod in existence. You have to go to various websites, but I'll leave all those in the written guide. Okay, so the Batman file is unique because it has a WAD, but then it has a DEH file, which is called a dehacked file, and you're going to need to load both of them up. So we're going to make another shell script, and we're also going to move that WAD file out of this main folder because we don't want it loading up in ArcOS because it's going to look like you can just load the WAD game up, but when you try, it's not going to work. So instead, we're going to move these files into a folder called Mods, and that's just going to take it away from the main menu. So again, we're going to make another shell script here for Batman Doom. But this time around, we're going to make a couple changes to it. First thing, we want to make sure it boots up Doom 2 instead of Doom. And then here, we're going to add that mod folder as a subfolder here within the directory. And then we're going to add these exact names here. So batman.wad. And then we need to add the dehacked file. So you type in dash deh, and then you make the path again. But this time make it a deh file instead of a wad file. And that's it. Now we set up Batman Doom. So there are other circumstances I want to go over quickly as well. So for example, with Aliens Eradication, this one loads a PK3 file as well as a WAD file. So in this circumstance, I'm going to move just the WAD file over into that subfolder, and I'm going to leave the PK3 file in the main folder. So first things first, we're going to move the PK3 and the WAD file over into the main folder. And then I'm going to get that WAD out of the main folder so that way I don't accidentally boot it. And same thing here, we're just going to take another shell script and we're going to make it work for Aliens Eradication. So now we can remove that subfolder from the Batman shell script. And then we'll paste in the name of the file. And then we can also get rid of that dehacked line. And then we'll just paste in the second one here. And now remember, because this one is in the mod subfolder, we have to keep that mod section there. And that's all you have to do. You just kind of line up the files one after the other. And then also change it from Doom 2 back to Doom 1. And there we are. We're now pointing to the correct files. Okay, so let's have a look at the main folder here so we can kind of wrap our heads around it. So we have our Doom source files, which will load directly out of this folder here. You don't need to do any other work for those. And that includes Hexen and Heretic and Wrecker and Sigil as well. And then we have shell scripts that will load PK3 files, for example with Brutal Doom. And then we have shell scripts which will load files within the mod subfolder, for example Batman Doom. And finally we have a mixture like Aliens Extraction, which uses a PK3 file, but then also calls back to a mods file, which we had to put in the subfolder as well. In the end, this is the majority of the organization you're going to have to do, is basically these different categories and what kind of shell scripts you're going to need to implement. Okay, so going into my Dooms folder, you can see I have a bunch of different files available to load. I also have that Mods folder that's there as well if I wanted to go into there, but in general, I just want to stick to this main menu. So to begin, let's just start up Doom and make sure it works and everything's okay. So here you go, this is the typical version of Doom, also called Vanilla Doom. Now one unique feature of LZ Doom is that it allows you to look up and down. You can also go into the controls and invert the controls, so just something to think about. One thing that had me stuck for a while is the heads up display. If you go into the display options and then you change screen size, that'll allow you to see, for example, your traditional bar that has all of your ammo and stuff, or you can make it smaller, or you can actually get rid of all the items on your heads up display. So this is a cool opportunity to create whatever version of Doom you want to have. Do you want to be able to look up and down? Do you want to have a heads up display? Do you want to have crosshairs? All those things are available in the options. Okay, let's try out Heretic. So this one is made by Raven Software and it uses the Doom engine. And it works just fine. Music works, everything else is good. Hexen also works. Hexen is actually an indirect sequel to Heretic, using the same engine and everything, so this one's kind of a neat as well. You have different classes you can use in this one. And then you can use official Doom add-ons like the Plutonia Experience, and those will just load right up. And the nice thing about these is there's no extra work required. You just take those wads and you throw them into that same Doom folder. 
And Sigil is another total conversion I really like. This is made by John Romero, who's one of the original developers of Doom, and it has that very classic feel, even though it's only a couple years old at this point. And then probably one of the most infamous mods that are out there, you can run Chex Quests, and all you have to do for this one as well is you just throw it into that same folder. Because it's a WAD file, you don't have to do any other work, it's very easy. Wrecker is a new one as well, I really like this one, it has a kind of a Norse feel to it. Alright, let's bring out the big guns. Let's start with Brutal Doom. So first I'm going to show you Brutal Doom Lite. This is basically a modified version of Brutal Doom that makes it easier to run on lower end systems. You can see here there's not much difference to the gameplay experience. A little bit more blood, things like that. But it runs really nice and smooth, very fast. So here's the most recent version of Brutal Doom, and you can see here there's a lot of modifications to the levels. For example, you know, the windows have glass, you know, there's lights and sounds, and there's more enemies, and there's blood everywhere. This one is just kind of chaotic, uh, but it's a lot of fun to use. To me, this version of Brutal Doom is just kind of like a slightly upgraded version of the regular Doom. You know, it has better visuals, and it has a couple neat guns, you know, the ability to reload and jump and things like that. You can throw grenades. It's just kind of crazy. Okay, there's also a purist version of Brutal Doom that you can load up as well, and this basically is just the original guns and everything else, but just a little bit more bloody. So it gives you all those upgraded visual features that are in Brutal Doom without having to use those new modern guns. You just have your original gun. This is kind of a nice compromise between having the upgraded visuals and that original Doom experience. Now, if you want to go full modern, you have the ability to use what they call Call of Doom. And this is basically Doom with Call of Duty weapons. You also have the ability to look down the sights with this one as well, very much like a modern first person shooter. And this one's kind of funny, it's like a tactical version of Doom, you know, it just has the ability to look down the sights and headshot people and things like that. It doesn't have anything like aim assist, which will help you when you're using a handheld console for a first person shooter game, so it's a little bit weird to control, but in general it's pretty cool. So there's also a version of Call of Doom that allows you to use the Brutal Pack on top of it. So basically you have all the upgraded visuals, all the blood and stuff like that, and all of the modern weapons. So this is like the ultimate version of Doom, because you have all the cool weapons as well as all of the cool visuals. It feels like a completely different game. Now to be honest, it's kind of hard to control this on the RG351P, it's just not a very precise way of controlling a first person shooter game. So I would recommend checking out these thumb grips by this company called Skull & Co. And I've actually done an entire video on these and I'll leave it linked below. But basically these are just little caps that you put on top of your thumbsticks to make it easier to use. Here you can see it's like the Elite version which is really high up, but then there's a middle ground one which I really like which kind of makes it feel like an Xbox controller. And then it also has a very shallow one as well. And there's nothing special about these thumb grips, they're actually made for the Nintendo Switch, but they work perfectly on this device. So once I pick it up, you can immediately tell that you just have a little bit better response and everything's a little bit more nuanced. So this is a more ideal way to play this game. And I think these thumb grips are like, I don't know, 8 or $10, like totally worth it. And it doesn't stop there. You can actually use external controllers with LZ Doom. So what you need to use is something like this 8-bit Doe wireless adapter. And then you can plug in a PS4 controller or an Xbox One controller, and you can control that wirelessly. So here I am with my PS4 controller, and it works just fine. I had to do a few tweaks within the joystick settings, but you can see here it's working great. And I get it, it's a little ironic to use an external controller to control a retro handheld device. But at the same time, I love unlocking the potential of this device, and this is one of the many things you can do with it. Okay, let me show off a couple more mods and then we'll wrap up this video. Now I really didn't care much for this game, the aliens are just like super fast and like I'm not great at these kind of games anyway, and so it just kind of freaked me out, but if you want to play something and you want to have that challenge on a retro handheld device, this looks like a pretty fun experience. Here's a neat one called Doom the Golden Souls, and this is basically Doom, but it's inspired by Mario 64. So you actually like jump into paintings to go to your levels and stuff, you collect coins, you know, it's just kind of ridiculous. But I love this contrast of like really bright and shiny colors and sounds, and then just like relentless violence. It's just kind of funny. 
And here's another mod I really like because it looks nothing like the original Doom, and it's called The Adventures of Square. And I'm not really sure what the point of this game is. I know you just are supposed to shoot all the blue dots, and I think you're a purple square, but uh, it's just kind of weird and funny, and I like the kind of cell-shaded, cartoonish look of everything. I mean, you can really tell that somebody spent a lot of time making this look nice. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I really love unlocking the extra potential of a lot of these devices like the RG351P. So these are some of my favorite videos to make. So if you have other requests, just let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to consider them. Now, like I mentioned before, this is only for ArcOS right now, but I expect that in the future, you'll be able to do this on 351 Elect as well. So stay tuned to the 351 GitHub page so that you can keep abreast of all the different changes because this stuff changes very often. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy gaming.